Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis and this is the seventh video in our series about fluids, electrolytes and acid-based disturbance. And today we're gonna talk about the osmolar gap, call it osmolar or osmolal gap, it doesn't matter. Measured osmolality minus calculated osmolality. So let's get started. If you subscribe to my channel and go to my playlist about acid base fluids and electrolyte disturbance you will find all of these videos in the playlist today is the seventh some words of wisdom before we start repetition is the mother of pedagogy if you want to strengthen your memory use your memory if you can't explain it simply you don't understand it well enough it's what medicosis is all about some definitions from previous videos. What's osmosis? Simple diffusion of water. From high concentration of water to low concentration of water. From low concentration of solute to high concentration of solutes. Osmotic pressure, the pressure needed to stop osmosis, which happens to equal the pressure of osmosis. Osmol, the osmosis caused by a mole. Normal plasma osmolality, 290 milliosmol per liter. Osmolality is the amount of force per volume measured in milliosmoles per kilogram. How about osmolarity? Remember osmolarity in the liter or liter like this for our American friends. Measured osmolality is the one you measure in the lab. Calculated osmolality is the one you determine using the equation. You calculate it. 2 times sodium plus glucose over 18, you can say 20 to make it easier, BUN over 2.8 or 3. So let's calculate it. 2 times sodium, sodium is normally 140, so 2 times sodium is 280, plus glucose is normally 100 over 20, plus BUN usually 15 over 3, equals 290 milliosmoles per liter. Normally measured osmolality equals calculated osmolality and normally osmolality in the interstitium has to equal that of the plasma has to equal the osmolality in the ICF. All of them equals 290. If you want to make the calculated osmolality equation easier, 2 times sodium plus 10. That's it. Forget about all of this nonsense. 2 times sodium plus 10 equals 290. The lab technicians are mediocre. They just measure the osmolality using the osmometer or the machine. I'm a competent doctor. I calculate the osmolality using my cerebral hemisphere depending on sodium, C, sodium, which is the main cation. So calculate osmolality this. Depending on the big three, sodium, which is the main extracellular fluid cation, glucose, which is the main source of energy, and BUN, which is the main source of now, normally measured osmolality equals calculated osmolality. Maybe there is a slight variation between them. Yeah, measured osmolality can be like higher than calculated by 1, 2, maybe 5, but less than 10. If the difference between them is more than 10, Houston, we have a problem. This is called the osmolar gap. So the osmolar gap is measured osmolality minus calculated osmolality. If the number is more than 10, there is a problem. There is a Trojan horse among us. There is, there are foreign invaders, foreign substances in your body, and it's the doctor's job to figure them out and kick them out of your body. Okay, question time. Let's say that the measured osmolality is 320, serum sodium is 140, serum glucose is 100, BUN is 15. When you see these numbers together in a question, they want the osmolar gap to be calculated. Okay, so calculate the osmolar gap, and why is that significant? Now pause the video and try to answer it. Okay, let's answer this. What is the measured osmolality? We already have it, 320. What is the calculated osmolality? Let's calculate the osmolality first because we have to calculate the osmolality before we determine the osmolar gap. So calculated osmolality equals 2 times sodium plus glucose over 20 plus BUN over 3 go 2 times sodium 2 times 140 is 280 the glucose is 100 so 100 over 20 is 5 the BUN is 15 over 3 is 5 so the calculated osmolality equals 290 watt 
Osmol, no, milli osmol per liter. Numbers of osmols over volume. Now let's calculate the osmolar gap. So the osmolar gap equals measured osmolality minus calculated osmolality. Cool. So what's the measured? 320 minus 290. And the answer is 30 milli osmols per liter. Is 30 bigger than 10? Where I grew up, the answer is yes. So do we have a problem? Yes, what is the problem? There are foreign substances in your body and it's our job to find them and kick them out. Some medicosis words of wisdom. The osmolar gap does not exist. It's just a gap in our calculation. It's a gap in the equation because the equation of calculated osmolality, two times sodium plus glucose plus BUN, doesn't include the other substances that might be present in your body. It's a gap in our calculation. It doesn't really exist. So, because in the book about the seven habits of highly effective people, successful people put first things first. So, first things first, a smaller gap doesn't exist. Don't be fooled. Smaller gap, osmolarity measured minus osmolarity calculated. Normally, a smaller gap less or equal 10. So, to remember it, which one is the measured one larger or the calculated one is bigger? So, remember your ABCs. You have A, B, C, D, E until you go to M. So, M comes after C. M is supposed to be greater than C. That's why we do measured minus calculated and not the opposite. And if you are confused, get the larger number that they give you and then the smaller number of the calculated osmolality larger minus smaller don't be an idiot so let's deal with the elephant in the room. i mean the horse in the room exogenous substances that are currently present in your system they are measured by the osmometer by our friend the lab technician the mediocre guy and not calculated in the equation the big three so what are these substances that will increase the osmolar gap more than 10 here are the list here is the list methanol ethanol isopropanol, ethylene glycol, propylene glycol, sorbitol and mantle. How to memorize them? Remember your organic chemistries when you used to count one, two, three? You, we used to say meth, eth, prop, so methanol, ethanol, isopropanol, meth, eth, prop, but, whatever. Then two glycols, ethylene glycol and propylene glycol, and two sugars, sorbitol, mannitol. It's amazing. These are the Trojan horses. Three of them, methanol, ethylene glycol, and propylene glycol, also cause a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So, question. What are the substances that can increase both the osmolar gap and the anion gap? The answer, methanol, ethylene glycol, propylene glycol. Very important for your test. In case you fall asleep during the video, measured osmolality is measured during using the osmometer. Calculate osmolality, calculate using the equation, depending on the big three. The osmolar gap measured minus calculated. Normally, less than 10. If more than 10, we have a problem. There are foreign substances in your body. Clinical take-home points, my favorite part of the lecture. Whenever you are taking care of a homeless patient in the emergency room or any patient that you suspect with a drug abuse or drug use problem, always, always calculate the calculated osmolarity and calculate the osmolar gap measured minus calculated. Don't just depend on the measured osmolality that you get from the lab. You have to calculate the numbers yourself. More than 10, let's go fishing for the Trojan horse and try to give the patient some hope and get them of that toxin. Wow. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget you can get access to my notes if you go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard and subscribe to this channel because this playlist is gonna be awesome.